of seven Bullshit on series I'm gonna turn rich This makes me a customizer Obviously we're putting all these nice cool pretty parts on the bike I mean look at the exhaust For sakes that's pretty bad For dropping it It's not like I ever crash or anything I'm the safest rider in the world But uh It could happen so We need to get some parts To protect this thing This this part right here. So let's go get some protection for the bike. Some protection? I mean, it sounds like I'm getting it rubber. So the astute observer would know these parts have been on the bike for close to a year. Now this whole video, like I said, was filmed nearly a year ago. So what's going on? Well, the idea originally was I, I went down to the place and met with the people. T-Rex Sliders is the company I was working with in this video. Uh, they didn't pay me or nothing, but they hooked me up with the parts. They're real cool people. And they're, they're actually just right out here in Dallas. And I'd gone out there and met with them and they'd give me a bunch of parts. And uh, the idea was I was gonna film me putting all the parts on. And I was gonna do a bit where I kind of like rode my bike down there and like pretended I was picking up the parts even though I really already had them. Cause I wanted to show off the whole, the factory to you guys. Cause it is a really cool factory. They make all the stuff right there. They actually have these like CNC machines and, and uh, um, Kind of stuff like that you know they, they actually cut out all the bits the metal and the plastic for some reason even though i thought it looked fine they wanted to like you know spruce it up a little bit you can go around put some new paint in the walls and clean it up and i think they just got real busy and i called them up several times tried to arrange an appointment for that and that's the reason this video never came out before and that's what we're doing i just finally said you know what these guys are awesome they gave me some great stuff i got to put this video out there i got to show it off for them so there's a t-rex video not the way i planned but hey Let's go over real quick what we got here. I think almost all the stuff is going to be incredibly easy to install. It's the most straightforward. This is going to be one of the easier uh, bolt-on series ever. Uh, but this is like their whole little protection kit. We've got a set of axle sliders here, front and rear. Also on the other end of the table here, we have a set of actual spools for a uh, for a stand. A lot of people will put axle sliders on the rear of their FZ07 and use that as a stand to stand the bike up with which will work unless you actually have to take the back wheel off. The FC07 does not have spools, doesn't even have a place for spools. So this kit is really cool. Um, this will actually clamp on there and give us a set of proper place to jack the rear end up. Uh, these are some big old case covers here. Really nice, made out of that heavy plastic stuff, whatever it was called, I forget what it's called. But you can see all these machining marks in here. Really neat stuff, very bad. And then these are the frame sliders, if you want to call them frame sliders. They're not really the same as a frame slider. They're better. And these will go right on here. Uh, man, a really great kit. When it's all said and done, I'm gonna sleep a lot better, you know, knowing all this stuff is on the bike. I really, since doing all these mods to it, have been uh, wanting to put this on so bad. I've had this for a little while now. Anyway, let's get to putting this stuff on. First thing I'm gonna install is these spool sliders just so I can then get the bike up in, in the center here. And it actually tells me to start with the one on the left side, which is the more annoying one to see because the bike is leaning into it. But of course, once we get these on, everything else will be much easier for you to see. See, I'm thinking ahead. A six millimeter and a five millimeter Allen to take this apart it comes together in the package here. And you will need a little bit of Loctite according to the directions. And you can see in here, this is actually some of that heavy plastic stuff that they would use on the sliders. That way it won't uh, nick up your swing arm. It says to insert this from the back side here. Okay. Temporarily stuck that bolt in there just so I can <laughs> free my hands. Otherwise this would have been a little hard to do. I'm gonna put just a dab of Loctite on these. You don't gotta go crazy. A lot of times people say use blue or red. I always just use red. I just use it spread out a little bit. And it's always fine. I've always been able to get uh, red Loctite off. It's a ton of Loctite. Whoops. As far as where to place this on the unit here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to use this edge since it'll be the same on both sides. This edge here with the uh, swing arm right up to that. There we go. Chin. Let's do the other side. The one for the brake side over here has got this weird bracket here. It's a little bit different. I'm sure it's to kind of fit in here around the brake. Uh, this on here. All right. Ah, right there. Feels very good. This makes all future work so much easier. 
That was definitely a good idea to do those first. All right, I've taken the rear axle sliders apart from how they come in the box, because it was a little bit confusing there, but I figured it all out here. Uh, you'll want to basically, you have to almost grab the end of this screw here with your finger and then unthread this bar here on both sides. And then these big old pieces here are threaded into these pucks themselves. Uh, so what you have here, uh, essentially is gonna be, this is going to be going through the axle with these on the end. These bolts will be holding this into place. And then these, once this is on, sort of thread onto there. Uh, once these are threaded on, then you'll have these little set screws that'll go in and hold them in place. One of these threaded ends here has a small indention in it. And what that does, it'll fit right over this little bit of the axle that sticks out, right there. And then the other one will go on the other side, it's just flat. I'm gonna semi-thread it on one side just so it's not flopping all around. That gives us some structure to stick this in there. Oh no, it won't go through that side. Ah, I see, it's gotta go through the other side, doesn't it? Sometimes these axles, they get narrow on one end towards the other. Oh yeah, it slips right into the axle there. Now to come to this one. Yep, sure enough, it's threading in there. You need a five millimeter as well as a wrench to hold it on the other side. There we go. Take our pucks here and we screw them on. Now I've put the small hole here at the bottom just so it doesn't look funny. That's where the set screw goes into. All that's gonna do is keep this from backing off now that it's screwed on. Just like the back, one of these has got a small indention in it. And that'll go on, yeah, on this side with the threads. So you wanna take your rod and go ahead and thread it on there a couple turns. I think they say five turns in the instructions. That's so it doesn't end up all tight on one side and not the other. Look, I'll do it like this for the shot so you can see what's going on. We'll do the engine cases next. It's the same as they are. Right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the M70s, there's one, two, three of those. But I've organized all my bolts here. Uh, your smallest, you have smallest one, a medium one, those are just one each. Then you have three and three, and these ones will look almost exactly the same, but if you look closely, these are just slightly taller in this portion right here. The smallest one will be the 50, the second smallest one will be the 60, then you have your 65s and then your 70s. Um, for simplicity, then I'm gonna start with the left side. So that uses all three of my 65s. Once you get this on, cleaning behind this cover here will be difficult, so let's go ahead and make sure you get all the grime on of it now. Of course, at the same time, you won't be able to see the grime underneath here, so it's this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. All right, I'm gonna remove these three bolts then now, and hopefully, in the moments I had this off to putting the new one on, hopefully no oil will start leaking out. Conveniently, these are five millimeters, and so is the new hardware we're putting on. They've put zip ties on here, I'm sure, to keep these pieces from falling off. And when we cut them here to get them in place, I'm sure they're going to be going all over the place, being a pain. Yes, that's going to possibly be annoying. They seem to kind of fit in there, so hopefully they'll stay in place and won't make me go crazy and throw this across the garage floor. All right, we're not dripping oil, that's good. Okay, no, that goes right in place. all threaded up. I'm just kind of staging these down bit by bit here. This one right here is being sort of snug the whole way down, which would make you think it was being cross-threaded, and I went back and forth a few times in, and I know I'm not. This bolt that came out of it, though, was very snug the entire way out. I hate things like that. As long as you take your time in making sure you're not cross-threading it, the point is now I'm almost all the way down tight with this thing. It never got any more snug at some point, or started to hang up. In fact, I've checked it several times. I can still back it back out, so it's not cross-threaded. I'm sure there's an exact torque that these are supposed to be torqued to. I'm just holding the wrench up here because I know they don't take a lot. If I held it out here and tightened it, I could definitely strip these out. Like, uh, that, that's good right there, a little uh, Holding it up this end of the wrench. And uh, at this end of the wrench is bad. All right, awesome. One, two, three, four, five. All right, I got it. I thought these were gonna be more of a pain on the other side, but they've actually got like, um, 
kind of up. They hold in there fairly decently. So the smallest one right down here, and it should be that bolt right there. The next smallest one, what was it, the M60. Okay. So supposedly I can't screw this up now as I'm screwing it up. These cases are always the first thing to go in a wreck, so this kit is pretty bad. Bitch, and those are done. Cool. Now for the speed rail slash frame sliders. I do package this well, don't they? An M12, an M12, an M100 will go here. I actually really like this step right here, setting it all out the way it's supposed to go. But it's a very important step, so don't forget to do it. Big 17 millimeter for this one here. I would think it would go without saying, but I need to say it. When you take these bolts out, be sure to only do one side at a time, like left side of the bike, right side of the bike. You don't pull these, rail, these bolts off and go over to the other side and pull those bolts off. That makes the engine try to fall out. Uh, you guys may remember Chase on Two Wheels did that a few years ago and everyone had a big laugh at him, but you know, if you didn't know, well, you wouldn't know. It just didn't dawn on him that these bolts hold the engine in, I suppose. I have seen where you pull a bolt out of a bike and then you watch the, the motor seems to drop just a hair and you can't get the bolt back in. If that happens, you can just put a jack under the bottom, you know, like with a rubber piece underneath it or a piece of two by four and you just put a little bit of pressure against it and you'll be just fine. Eight millimeter for this one right here. That's a good noise to make. Large bolt with a stubby piece in this direction. In this case, that will go like that. And then we'll just make this piece like this. Pictures are nice. You just look at them and then they tell you what to do. I believe both of these, according to what I saw in mine, are at 35 foot pounds of torque. So I'll just kind of cinch them down to start and then I'll come back with the torque wrench. You should always keep your torque wrenches set to zero when you're not using them. Yeah, that, that bolt was basically snug the entire time out, so now's a good time to check. Yeah, you see the motor has dropped just slightly. Like I said, the motor is come down just a hair, and it means when we go to put the bolts back in now, um, this one's not gonna line up. Trust me, this is really common, and it's not hard to fix. So, I don't even have the greatest jack right here. This just went out of my truck, but it will work. Uh, what we need is a jack. Uh, the best kind is those hydraulic ones with the rubber piece, because it's got that nice rubber piece, it's round, just come up nice and smooth against this. Uh, I've got this kind, and you make this work, you just gotta be careful with it. You wanna put a two by four between this and the motor, so we don't, uh, damage the motor or anything like that. I'm basically, just going to come up with it here. Gently bring it back up until it's in position. Now, if I keep jacking any higher, the bike's starting to try to lift a little bit. But if I pull in the handlebars, see, I can make it line up just perfectly. I used to install frame sliders uh, in a shop. This was pretty much every other bike, you'd have to be putting a small jack underneath it and getting it set back correctly. You gotta put this piece in to start with what you gotta do. What you try to do is get this threaded. Pull on it just a hair there. There we go, yeah, when I pull on it, suddenly it's easy to turn. So I just give a little bit of weight on there. And I let off. See, as soon as I let off, it gets tight, but if I pull on the bike a little bit, it's easy to turn. it up slightly with the wrench. Oh well, it's a slider, that's what it's for. Back our jack off here. We're done, we've done it all now. Full set of T-Rex sliders on there. Looking freaking good. See the side profile, how far they stick out. Bolted on, keeping the bike, the pretty parts off the ground. Really solid built stuff here, man. I like this style of slider so much better than the pucks that just stick straight out. Those will hit, catch the ground, rip, bend the frame. These kind are so much better. 